show people, Philip Blank here, and today on Start It Up, we have this beautiful and new Porsche 911 Carrera Cabriolet. Painted in the aventurine green metallic, this 8th gen 911, the 992, strikes a balance between elegance and playfulness, and that's the personality we're going to explore here today. <laughs> Porsche 911, arguably the most iconic sports car of all time, first came out in 1964 and has slowly been refined through the past 59 years, bringing us to what we have here today, the 992 series. Now, if you didn't know, the company that we know today as Porsche was founded in 1931 by three persons, Adolf Rosenberger, who was a prior race car driver for Mercedes-Benz, Ferdinand Porsche, who is the namesake of the company, and then Ferdinand Porsche's son-in-law, Anton Piesch. Now, originally, they were not a car manufacturer, but just an engineering and consulting company. So their first key assignment was for the German government and Volkswagen to build a car for the people. What they came up with was the Volkswagen, <laughs> I'm slurring all my W's and V's, the Volkswagen Beetle. As you can imagine, this timeline really brought them right into the era of World War II. And then from that time, they didn't produce cars. They helped come up with the military and amphibious design of the Beetle. Fast forward many years, and then the son and daughter, Ferry and Luis of Ferdinand Porsche, developed the first Porsche actually designed and built by them, the Porsche 356. The 911 is the backbone and legacy of Porsche's designs. The Carrera Cabriolet is the comfort and touring focused version of the 911, which takes the rear wheel drive Carrera and makes it a cabrio or a convertible. The 11 Cabrio has an overall length of 178 inches. It's 80 inches wide, 51 inches tall, and it has a ground clearance of 4.6. In the front of this car, you do have the nose lifting option. That'll give you a bit more clearance to get over any high speed bumps. Now paired with the rear engine flat six, this car has the eight speed PDK transmission. PDK is a mouthful of a German word that pretty much translates to Porsche dual clutch. You cannot get the seven speed manual clutch in the Cabriolet but you can get the Carrera T, which does have that optional. Now, aside from all the technology they're putting in the eighth gen that was not in the seventh, such as your piezoelectric injectors and a bunch of different components throughout the entire system to upgrade it, the main cosmetic difference is the rear end. They're really emphasizing this monobeam LED tail light that wraps all the way along the spec, which is my personal favorite rear end of the 911s. And then along with the aluminum body panels, I think they're, especially with the Cabriolet, accenting this hunchbackness of the 911 here. Now first things first, when you walk up to the car, doorknobs pop out, greets you with the mirrors coming down. We're going to pull this trunk button, which you hold, and that causes the rear to fully open up. We'll go check that out. Now in iconic Porsche style, there is your engine. There is not much you can access, nothing to modify from the simple standpoint. Well, your three liter is packed out into there. So we'll go ahead and close that back up. Hold it again. Now coming around to the front, on this we do have a rear emblem. Over on the RS is a decal for they say weight savings and aerodynamics, but I prefer the real badge there with this Porsche coat of arms. You swipe your hand across the front here, pops your hood up, you grab the little lever here, and there is your trunk space. Up here you do have 4.6 cubic feet of storage. This is the only storage in the car. And then right here on the side, you pop that off. You have your fix-a-flat tire sealant goop as you should not be taking off your wheels. As in a Porsche, there are no spares, so there's no means to take your wheel off outside of the shop. You also have a tow hitch point that in the front you'll screw in. Now there is nothing else up here, just your windshield wiper fluid, but the rest is all covered up for minimal access. Down in the front of the car, you do have the coolant system in there for your rear engine. And then coming along, we do have a front end camera, which toggles on when you put it in the drive for getting up close. And the butterfly headlights is a key feature of the current generations of Porsche. There are multiple options for headlights in the Porsche configurator. So there's a decent amount of customization there. Now for the tires, you do have the big old front brakes here. And then on these, it's running Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's. And then right here on 911s, the fuel is up in the front. Do a quarter turn, pop it out. You got a little nozzle for holding it there. They recommend running 93 octane minimum. Now that aventurine green is hardly noticeable kind of in the lighting. Sometimes you can kind of see the green peeking through, but a lot of times it really looks gray. And coming around here to the rear, we have the iconic 8th gen mono tail light that wraps all the way across to left and right. Now this car is not equipped with the rear end steering, 
that is an option on some of your higher end Porsches as well. Back here to the front, we open up, and then in the rear, this is a two plus two seater, so we do have two little bitty baby seats here in the rear. As you can see, almost no leg room, so expect to only be getting small children in here. It does have the mounts for a car seat, but really gonna be tight there. Now, if you don't have kids or you know you're never gonna have a rear passenger, right here by the seat belt, you slide it down, pull a lever, it gives you these little shelves you can have on both sides. So we'll flip that back up. Inside here, we do have a new command center here for the Porsches. It does have a nice balance of touchscreen and modernization, but you do still keep many of your physical buttons here. On your steering wheel here, you do have options for Siri. This is your volume button. This is your skip forward, but there is no skip backwards, which is kind of frustrating. And on the right side here, this is controlling your front cluster up there. In the Porsche iconic fashion, you do not have a push to start or key here on the right hand like a normal car. Always on the left side so you could start your vehicle up with your clutch while also shifting in the gear instead of having to deal with start. Your park is a button and then your manual transmission mode, letting your paddle shifters take over, is that there. Now for our buttons, you have your different drive modes, wet mode, increasing your traction control, dropping your torque curve, sport mode and then traction control, and this is your nose lift up and down. Here is the volume for the car, right here is the selector. Hidden underneath these panels are different touchscreen buttons for your defrost, front and rear, AC max, and some of those options. Now looking at these lower controls, you get the heated and cooled seats, convertible roof up and down there, and then you hold this in for your wind deflector to flip forward. Down below you have a parking brake, and then this is one of two cup holders in the vehicle. This thing never gets old. At the core of this 911 is the famed Porsche twin turbo flat six engine, which is in the rear here. And that engine just brings in such an excellent drive experience to this machine. Now the three liter in this one is putting out 379 horsepower and then 331 pound feet of torque. And the thing about this car is that's enough. All of these companies are fighting to one-up each other and trying to put as much horsepower into it. But the engine in this one really covers about 80 to 90% of the use cases for this thing. And the size and internals of this engine is really what sets the different levels of the 911 apart. So here you have the, just the Carrera, then below, above that you have the S, then you have the Turbo, then you have the GT. Your zero to 60 in the Cabrio is 4.2 seconds, and then your top speed is 180 miles per hour. Now aside from the fact that this thing is bonkers, although a manageable bonkers, Ooh. it is a two plus two, and that just pretty much means Porsche is not saying it's a four seater because the seats in the back is like for very tiny humans and they don't classify them as full seats. But there are seat belts back there and you could mount a car seat in the rear. So maybe that's what you need to say. It's a family car and uh, get your wife to justify one. An excellent part of this car is with the tires and just the package and everything on it, you can drive it all day and then drive it on the weekend to the track. There's no crating it, not worried about the same mileage issues and then just rip it all weekend long and it'll do such a great job. It's not gonna throw you off the wild and sporadic behavior that can come from like the GT3 RS, which is just a monster of a car. The nimbleness is really what Porsche is renowned for. And just, ah, oh, man, <laughs> that engine. I know I've said it, but the whole package is just such a great, great option for cars. It just, Wish they were not so expensive, man. Putting that roof back up, slow down to the 30, and you can keep driving, hold the button. If you accelerate over, it'll stop you. I'm closing it. Now, if you're buying a 911, fuel efficiency is not going to be your main concern. You're getting a combined MPG of about 20, and your fuel tank size is 16.9 gallons. It gives you about a range between 300 and 400 miles. There is a $230 option on the Porsche configurator to upgrade the tank size to a 23.7 and that'll boost your total range over 500 miles, especially if you're doing longer highway trips. Now just some numbers to bring the perspective into scale. 
in 2022, Porsche sold 310,000 cars across the globe. In 2021, Toyota sold 10.5 million cars and its subsidies. So, in just 11 days, Toyota puts out the entire volume of Porsche for the year. On the opposite side of that spectrum though, Lamborghini put out a little bit over 9,000 cars for the entire year. So, kind of just can see the level of mass production. Another really interesting perspective being a Westerner, normally people think, ah, oh, America is the biggest car consumer. China was Porsche's number one market last year, selling over 90,000 cars. Here in the US, the sales were creeping up on 80,000, but still interesting to think that China, where most people don't know much about, is actually consuming more Porsches than anybody else. Now with Cabrio, we can pop the roof down while driving up to a speed of 30 miles per hour. So we'll have to hold this button up. It's gonna drop it down fairly quickly. Oh, nice but you have to keep holding it so it's not like an auto window to get everything back up where it's going. And 911 really is the enthusiast car from the smoothness, the engine, the feel, the pedigree, the legacy, everything that goes along with it is just a car that no matter who gets behind the wheel can appreciate and enjoy. To me though, where this thing completely falls short is the fact that to get the base base model is 120,000. Like that's to just get your foot in the door and that's not including the insane amount of options you can put on there. Now in Porsche's defense, they do have the 718 Cayman, which you can start getting into for around the $70 range for the bottom price. But for a car that's just this enjoyable, it is quite sad that so many people won't get the excitement and entertainment of being behind the wheel, but 120. Now another thing with the 911s, the range is insane. I have never seen a broader spectrum of price from the bottom all the way to the top. That top level is easily ringing in over 300k for a fully loaded GT3 RS. Now once you even start doing customizations on it, custom paint color, custom stitching, it just gets astronomical to where you could be buying two of these cabriolets. Now when I started driving this car more often, I hooked up my phone to the Apple CarPlay and then I thought something was wrong with my phone, like through Spotify streaming because the quality, I was like, well, something sounds wrong with these speakers. So I went to the equalizer and like, okay, is there a way, did, did the bass get shut all the way off? Is something wrong? And it's just, the stock speakers on this thing are, in my opinion, pretty garbage for what you're paying in a $150,000 car. Now you can add on the couple thousand dollar Bose upgrade and then the Burmeister even higher up version from that, but I would still expect better audio from the bone stock. Now the other big con to me is there was a trend for a while where people were switching everything over to touchscreen control. Get rid of your knobs, get rid of your AC. Thankfully all those options are back in here. You can control things, but they got rid of the garage door opener buttons. Now you can still control them, but you have to go click in the little home link app and then hold the button down just to touchscreen to go and open your gate or garage door. I think most people buying a Porsche are gonna have a garage to park them in might be far-fetched but I would really just like a physical button to be able to quick quickly click Now they do have GPS tracking to where when you pull up to wherever your programs gate or door is it'll pop up as suggesting like hey would you like to open it I think the best word that describes the cabriolet is balance you have an ample amount of engine and you have an ample amount of braking to match that it's not the fastest it's not the loudest it's not the most luxurious it just strikes such a well thought out balance between all of the needs something that you can drive daily, something that's fine in the rain. It'll satiate most of your supercar desires. The view eye in this car is not too bad. It does have wireless Apple and Android CarPlay, but it's actually pretty nice to just leave it in. I'm happy with what Porsche has given us. We do have here an air conditioning menu to give you more controls from the physical knobs you have down below. Then we'll go here into the vehicle settings. This is gonna give us control on how we want our shocks to behave, Pretty cool there it shows how your shows some of the internals on that screen there uh, some of your settings like your spoiler up or down drive mode what kind of torque curve you want and this car has most of your modern amenities your lane control your adaptive cruise control all the bells and whistles there trip here is just seeing some settings from the day and then the comfort is where you get into all the luxury settings of this car such as ambient lighting you can change the color and brightness of where you went throughout the rear the center console doors the feet um, so we can do a different color there we'll pick our poppy red and back on that you have a lot of options like look at this driver's seat so you can control how much percentage wise you want it to be on your back or on the rear 
we're just kind of in the middle for equal. Same with the ventilation. So that's a really interesting feature I've not seen on many cars. This is a completely bonus feature that I just love. If your passenger seat is say blocking your view or something like that, I can't physically reach over and grab the controls that are on the side of that. So when I click this adjust passenger seat button, I can now use my driver's seat controls to control the seat over on the right side. That is so extra and speaks numbers to the German precision in this machine. So I'm done adjusting that seat there. Now a huge con here, your garage door opener is buried in this home link menu. So there's no physical buttons to get here. It's frustrating backing out of the garage when, you, when you're in reverse, your rear camera pops up, but then you have to go select over here, home link to go and close out your garage door. In the settings menu itself, just so many different layers of customization for this car. I'm not gonna dig into those, but I am a fan of the controls for this thing. So that's all I've got for you here today on Start It Up, the 911 Carrera Cabriolet. An excellent car that I recommend you trying to find an opportunity to experience one, even if it's not purchasing it for yourself. There's a lot of test drives, track days, and Porsche driving experiences you can find across the US to get behind the wheel of one of these and just having that experience to know what it's like to actually drive one of the iconic 911s. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, or corrections down below. I'll be happy to get back with you, but I wanna thank you for your time. Have a good day, peace.